Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here speaking to you from the United Kingdom once more. Sandra's came up, come up with a wonderful theme this evening of change, inspiration and change that we live through. The last 19 months, we've lived through major changes, change after change after change. As we entered that lockdown and we entered those, that pandemic, things were forced upon us, things were changing around us, out of our control. And we were resilient and we stood up and we faced those challenges as a community all together. But again, as we thought we were coming out of that, what we call lockdown and that pandemic, only to be forced into more, more changes, restrictions, loss of freedoms, and loss of the things that we hold dear, like holidays, visiting families, having evenings out or time with friends. Those changes we've gone through, we've coped with. We've stood tall, we've become strong. We've actually come together as that community, not just as different countries or towns or cities, but actually one big community worldwide. That global pandemic has made us have all as something in common wherever we come from. But it's those changes sometimes that we enter into life that we create ourselves. Changes through dreams that we want to inspire to be, to be better people, or we get fed up with the things that we're doing and we just feel like a change. Or just like the pandemic, certain situations in life, such as relationships, careers, and many other things create change, the forced upon us, not of our wishing. Well, back in 2019, we were all living a wonderful life, having those freedoms of holidays, choosing where we went and how we did it. Well, back in 2019, in September, actually, Sandra said to us, how would you like to do a demonstration? We thought it's just a normal thing. Yes, we'd love to do a, San a demonstration, Sandra. She says, but this time we're going to do it online. And it was like, oh, never done that before. But instead of hiding from it, we took that step to do it. And we raised a few thousand dollars for Save the Children. And it's a wonderful cause. But Sandra wasn't happy with just staying there. She said, how would you like to do it again? Yes. Just thinking it was going to be online demonstration once more. And she said, no, this time there's a twist. There will be a theatre. And when you're demonstrating in the theatre, it will be live streamed across the world. And again, me and Kerry looked at each other and said, yes, not to be phased by change, but to see where it takes us. Sometimes change creates fear within us and we want to be held back, those self-limiting beliefs. But actually, if we stand up tall and be true to ourselves and have that conviction, resilience and strength, we can make a difference. As Sandra mentioned, 85 weeks ago, we started the Sunday gathering as a group together, a different venue. People said it couldn't be done. It won't work. What an absurd idea. And people said to us recently, what made you carry on and do it after people said that? And I said, because we'd already been doing it online. We knew it could be done. But we could have listened to those people and thought, no, we'll leave it. We'll not bother. But those people that have said that, today are actually working online, demonstrating online, fellow colleagues, fellow students, participants, a community of family. And what a difference it's made to us all. You're listening to me as part of a community of We Don't Die, even now on Facebook, where people are tuning in. Spiritualism, spiritism, the spiritualization, and even mediumship is reaching far more people. And I hear people saying, I can't wait to go back to normal. Well, this is normal. We've been here so long. We don't plan on going anywhere. We want to keep on spreading the word. We want to keep on sharing the joy. We want to listen to your stories. Just recently, we had David Blewis tell us about his story. What an emotional, moving story that was. About change, about helping others, being of service. That's exactly our plan, to be of service as Mary Alice Coleman spoke last week about that joy within us all and those changes too, how we master them. But it's here again this week, we find ourselves speaking and reaching out through our truth, through our upliftment, our inspiration, as a team united, 
Sandra, Kerry, myself, Darren and Scott, united in one common theme, service, service to humanity, providing somewhere for everyone to come to, to listen to truth, to listen to different ideas, to change their habits, to change their mindsets, heart sets, but not forced upon them, but to listen, to make their own minds up, to make their own choices. So change, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes can be good. From those moments we find ourselves in despair, where things are forced upon us, thrust upon us, where we can't see the wood for the trees as we see here in the United Kingdom. Sometimes in those dark places, light shines true and breaks through and new concepts, new ideas are born. So ladies and gentlemen, open your minds, open your hearts to the truths, the spiritual laws, that sometimes when we hold on to things persistently, we stop that natural progression of change happening. We are born into this life and we're introduced to change straight away. Taken from your loving parents' arms and put into education to learn about rights and wrongs, almost programmed through that educational system to tell you how to be, how you are meant to be, what you're meant to do. Even moving in from education to a career where an employee or employer tells you how to be, what they expect of you. But then as we get older, we start to reflect and think, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve as we find our true authentic self? Because this journey of change does create so much within us and it's needed even within spiritual development, even within the spiritualization of self to be a better person, change is needed. Those times that we get hurt, we go through growing pains, are needed. They don't feel wonderful, do they? And you can all relate to that in some way. But they do create a different you, a better you, a happier you. Because as we live through those changes, we adapt, we grow, we become more resilient. And it's these that we want to share with you this evening. Mm. Because if you want a different tomorrow, you need to make a different choice. And it might seem like something really obvious because what Phil has spoken about there is about changes coming and changes being embraced. But how often do we want a different tomorrow but find that a different tomorrow isn't coming because we've failed to make a different choice? When we look at the spiritualization of self, that need for change needs to become into our awareness. And you might think, well, how do I know that I need to change? Well, there are some telltale signs, we're just not always very aware of them. First of all, we have to be aware of the need for change. And this can present in a number of different ways. This can present in the way that you're going through life's upheaval and life just seems a little bit tougher than it ever did. And it feels like it's all uphill and you feel like there needs to be a change somewhere, but you're not sure what it is. Or you're at the end of your rope and you think, oh, if I let go, what's going to change? Where will it lead? Will I fall? Will I fly? But you know, the bird doesn't stand on the end of the branch and wonder whether the branch will hold it. The bird stands on the end of the branch knowing that its wings will carry it. Now, we might not have wings, but we certainly have confidence in ourselves if what we're doing is something that we are passionate about and that we believe in. If you get to the point where you're tired of just living day to day and every day seems to be the same kind of day and you feel like your day is not big enough to hold your dreams, to hold your desires, your day isn't big enough to accumulate all the thoughts that you'd like to feel like you were gathering together, it means that your soul is calling out. It means that your soul is calling out for you to just do. And that's when we have to, as human beings, say, yes, I'm going to do it. And you begin to feel that inner rumbling of there being a something that's changing. And as we make those changes, changes often require for us to make decisions. 
And decisions aren't always the easiest thing to take responsibility for, but we actually have to. Change requires that we take full responsibility for our decisions. When you're faced with the reactions of your ideas, with your, when you're faced with the reactions of your deeds and your, the things that you're changing, you have to be responsible and accountable for the outcome. And again, that seems really simple, but it's really easy to point outside of ourselves to things and people and places and situations. Oh, we've got some strobe lighting on the go. It looks like the spirit world's visiting. <laughs> Um, and it looks like when that when the strobe lighting happens, we have to change. We do. But when we are in that space for taking responsibility for the actions and the deeds and the thoughts we've had, we really have to step forward and not point outside of ourselves. We have to move from blaming other people to not complaining about what our life's lot is, to not taking things personally and being conscious of the thoughts and the deeds that we've done. In that space where we make that different choice, everything feels different. And I once had um, a phrase, and I know that many of you will have heard it, that life is like a boat. It's safe and it's secure in the harbor, but that's not what boats are made for. Boats are made to be out on the ocean. They're made to be out on the open sea. They're made for taking journeys. They're made for finding out where you can go on your journey. So we've thought about some things, Phil and I, and we talk about this on our Tuesday class, The Way to Your Spirit, is what is needed to allow change to happen? Well, first of all, we have to walk our own path. We have to be our own leader. And Phil spoke there about when we were demonstrating online in September and then having another demonstration streamed. We felt like the spirit world were holding us to account in those moments to be leaders, not leaders for us, not leaders for we don't die, not leaders for the Spirit and Soul Foundation, but leaders for you. Leaders for the people around about the world and leaders for the spirit world. Because in that thinking and moving ahead, we each become leaders in our own thought. But when we are moving forward and change, we each have to be leaders in our own right. That means we have to stand up for what we're doing and stand up for what we're saying and make no apologies for the ideas that we're making happen. You also have to have clarity in your direction. It's really hard to make change if you're not clear about the direction that you're going. When you're sure about your direction, funny, things seem to happen. The universe hears the place you want to get to and something gives it momentum that takes it there. I'm not saying it makes the path any easier but it makes it more enjoyable. There's a passion, there's a purpose, there's a knowing, there's an energy, there's an enthusiasm happens. When you are moving in that, your own direction, you begin to master yourself. You begin to understand yourself. You begin to know that you're not perfect. You begin to understand and embrace all that you are. Those around about you will support you those about round about you will understand your dreams they'll understand what you're about and those that don't support you that don't have your corner that don't push your back when you need that little bit then maybe they're not meant to be there at that moment on your path with you we spoke last week on another um, talk and we shared that those that don't support you often have their own agenda. And that agenda might be their own fear. And that's not their fault. We're not passing judgment on it. But when somebody doesn't have your corner, they're just not able at that moment to support you. That doesn't mean you don't go ahead with the changes you've made. It means you follow your path. You allow yourself, as Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Now, if Shakespeare can say it, Oscar Wilde also said, 
be yourself for everybody else's taken. In that path of change, you just have to decide to start. It's as simple as that. You don't need to know necessarily what's at the end of the path. You just have to decide to start. When we started 85 weeks ago on the Sunday gathering, there was all sorts of do we need this and do we need that and do we need this? And a certain lady who's also on here said, we just need to do it. It will all work out. It, we just need to do it. So you do that, you do that and turn up at this time and we'll see what happens. Change sometimes requires for somebody to take the lead and then everybody else will follow. That doesn't mean the idea doesn't spread to other people as Phil shared their online services, everyday occurrences now. 85 weeks ago, not so often. But we've got to be sure about what we're communicating, why we're doing it and where we're going to. In the four agreements written by Don Miguel Ruth, he spoke about four things. And if you, it's a tiny little book, it doesn't cost very much. And actually, if you go online and Google or use your search engine, you'll find out. But the four things he talks about is first, be impeccable with your word. Don't allow your word to say anything that you don't mean. Don't allow your word to say anything about you that isn't true. And don't allow your word to be anything other than true and authentic. Number two, he said, don't take anything personally. When somebody else has something to say, know that it's their perspective, their stuff, their story and their journey. Don't take it personally. It won't be about you. It will be about them. He also says the third agreement is don't make assumptions. Oh, I often get caught in that space. And then I remember, don't make assumptions. Ask, what is it you're trying to say? Or I, this is what I've heard. What were you trying to share with me? Don't make assumptions. Assumptions are the part of your mind that will say, well, I bet that's what they're thinking. And before you know it, you've gone 10 miles down the road on that assumption. And then you've concluded, and then you've got 10 other options coming out of it. And you didn't even know if it was correct. You know what I mean? I'm sure you do. The fourth one is always do your best. If you go into a situation where you know at the very beginning you're going to be doing your best, then guess what? You come out the other side, not berating yourself, not beating yourself over the back and not chastising yourself because you went in there with a view of doing your best. And your best is all you can do on that day. It won't be the same as yesterday and it won't be the same as tomorrow. But in that moment, if you know you've done your best, given all the circumstances around about you, that's what you take in with you. Now, those four agreements are part of how we manage change. There are, other, there are other aspects about how we manage change, but you have to allow yourself to journey along that. Absolutely. And I can hear you just as I'm hearing my own little chatter in my mind said, well, sometimes life won't allow us to change. I can't control those situations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are glass houses. Our thoughts are living, our thoughts are conscious, and they're an energy that is caught by the universe. Just like our prayer when we opened the Sunday gathering. Some of you may have cried out for help. Some of you may have had dreams or wishes that you wish to be fulfilled. Some of you just sent healing out to everybody that you know and don't know, as we're all related together within this world. So actually, when we understand that we are those glass houses, it's really important that we start to think positive within this world, within these changes, because it's that positivity in your mindset that changes your whole personality or conviction. Because once you have an idea that inspires you, you start to believe it. So that mindset infuses emotionally upon your heart set and moves you forward. You start to want to change. You start to create those thoughts that you start to believe in because you want it. If we can build up and understand that our thoughts 
are heard by that great unseen world or the spirit world, then somebody is listening, somebody is hoping, somebody is helping, somebody is doing their best to help you. So we owe it to ourselves to help ourselves. That's not an egotistical, that doesn't mean a comment, it doesn't mean that we walk over other people. It means we become in service to mankind. We become in service to keep on trying, be resilient. We can't change other people's opinions. We can't change other people's lives straight away. But if we change our own by believing, having that mental strength, by being convicted, then we'll rub off on others. Other people will start to see that things are possible because you've made things possible. You've changed your life. And I'm sure all of us at some point have been able or are able to remember those tough times we've been through, just like the last 19 months, how we've all pulled together, how we all made sacrifices, but how we did things differently that made us happy or happier that helped other people through Sandra Champlain here, Kerry, Darren and Scott, we've done our bit to, so to be in service to humanity, to create a, a family, a community of like-minded souls that want to seek spiritual truths, to find the way to their spirit, to develop their spiritual abilities, to be, as some people said, unconsciously, finding their truth, authentic, their authentic selves, but also by doing what they love to do and they found time to do it, it's actually helped their families, their husbands, their wives, their children. It's had a knock-on effect. So actually honouring who you are, being true to who you are, being who you are, not comparing yourself, because we don't see a flower on the end of a tree comparing yourself or competing with another flower. They just blossom. Nature has a wonderful way of showing us how to be true. The beauty of nature, how a plant or a flower is the same species, but can take on different shapes, different forms, different colors. It's magnificent. We are exactly the same. We can take on different forms, different shapes. We can be magnificent. <coughs> Excuse me. If only we try our best, if only we have that positive thought <coughs> in mind. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> and <coughs> it's okay. He's fine. Manfully. And I had Phil talked <coughs> about there the flowers competing. Did you know that comparison is the one thing that will steal your joy? It's the one thing that will destroy any hope you have of progressing, of changing, of developing, and of being authentic is comparing yourself to other, to another person. You know that feeling where you've you've done something, you've baked, you've cooked, you've made, you've sung, you've created something, and you think, wow. <coughs> and then you look to the side to somebody else and you think, oh, theirs is bigger or a different color, or is that how we're meant to do it? or mine is a different shape, or maybe I didn't understand the instructions properly. And suddenly you start comparing and what you were proud of and what was beautiful and what was created from you suddenly becomes something you're not sure whether you want to own anymore. As human beings, we have a tendency to look outside our lane, but actually life is about knowing your lane. <coughs> Life is about being in your lane and letting go of everything else that's outside it. Because as Phil rightly said, we cannot control the thoughts of somebody, of other people about us. Change is about evolving into something new and we have to let go to let come. We have to let go of the old to create the new. Every ending is a beginning. We need the ending for the beginning. Change is about never trying to stay still. It's about never trying to be the same because it only brings resistance. To start this journey, we have to accept and discover ourselves. And as I was thinking about change, it got me um, remembering something that one of my tutors quoted from somewhere else when I was at uni. 
and I'm just going to read it out here. It says, when I was, well, I've written, when I was studying at psychotherapy, my professor walked around on a, in the platform was teaching stress management principles to us. She raised a glass of water and everybody expected that to be asked to, I, whether it was a glass full or a glass half empty. But in actual fact, what she did was she asked how heavy the glass was. And I, I could hear the murmuring of voices as people went, oh. And she said, actually, if I hold the glass for a few moments, it feels okay. <coughs> if I hold the glass for a few minutes, it becomes a couple of ounces or a couple of pounds. But if I can't hold this glass for an hour, my arm begins to tremble and freeze. My muscles begin to stress and my arm begins to get paralyzed and I'll let go of the glass and it will smash. Well, the same's about our stresses and our worries. If we resist changing, we hold on to things and our soul and our mind and our emotion if we allow ourselves to follow through and allow ourselves to let go, it's only heavy for a moment. But if we hold on to it as we go to bed and we wake up in the morning and it ruminates through our mind, the stresses of life become really, really heavy. Our body, our mind, our soul, our spirit begins to shake. It begins to ache. They begin to become paralyzed and suddenly life we let go of in an effort to try and hold on to the past and figure it out. We begin to not make any decisions. We begin to be incapable of change because our body is frozen, our mind is frozen, and our emotions are frozen into the fear of letting go. If we allow ourselves to move with things as they happen, talk about them, to discuss them, to share them, not to deny them and squash them down. They never get to the point where they get really, really heavy. So if you allow yourself to move through life and accept that change is the only constant, then you allow yourself to enjoy that journey of finding out who you are. Because I guarantee, by the time you get to your last breath on this world, you'll hopefully bear no resemblance to the person you are now. Because in actual fact, you've had that opportunity to develop and grow and change and blossom and inspire others and lead. Mm. Take the lead, be your own leader. Absolutely. Because if you can stand within your truth, if you can create your truth, if you can be yourself and you can do that work that inspires you, then you'll inspire everybody else. Darren and Sandra had a wonderful idea after visiting somewhere where they could create their own church, their own online service. And lo and behold, months later, the universe opened up through this, what we call the pandemic, as we started off created so many changes. That opportunity was there and then, and they took it. And we're here with them, serving the spirit world, being in service to you, going through our changes, through our evolution, understanding that mediumship is not just about evidential facts of proving life after death, but creating comfort, inspiring you, the living, to make better choices, to have better ideas in your mind, to call and send them out to those of your loved ones that have gone before us to help you. So ladies and gentlemen, be your own leader, be your own inspiration. Take those opportunities to speak and reflect and look at what you want and hold them dear within your heart and never give up because you are truly inspirational. <laughs>